Kia ora team, welcome to Daisy Tips. I want to talk to you about cars. And as we've said before, you can find cars in many states of repair throughout the Daisy maps. And when you approach it, you usually find something like this, which has some elements to do with the car. Um, ignore this one because it's got stuff in the boot, but you might run across a car that has some, some stuff in the boot, right? So there you go. That Headlamp is ruined, and that headlamp is pristine. Let us just take those headlamps out. So, there's a number of elements that you need to make a car function, and there are ways to uh, fix some of the elements of a car, and there's ways to make cars a little bit harder for other people to interfere with. Chances are when you run across a car, you are not going to have all these parts with it. So what do you do and how do you put these things together? Well, every car needs wheels. And yes, there are five wheels. All of the cars come with a spare wheel slot. So you need to find yourself a wheel and you need to pick it up. Um, if you are lucky, you can pop it into your inventory. They do weigh 36 just be aware of that, they do weigh 36. And for things like the Humvee and such like, and the M3S truck, they weigh a lot more. So you can pick them up in your hands, and they are quite heavy. You then need to find an associated part of your car, and when you hover your the little white pointer over it, you'll get the option to press R2 to attach, attach the wheel. If you have one in your inventory, you can pop it into your hands. You can attach the wheel. And there you go. In terms of the uh, spare in this case, the um, spare on this particular vehicle, which is the Sarka, is actually in the front. It's a rear engine drive. But for example, the Olga, you would go to the boot of the car. Put it in and it appears. So let's attach the rest of the tires, shall we? Right, now then, we're on to a winner. We've got a rolling chassis at least. No doors at this stage, but we've got a rolling chassis. Now, I don't have doors for this vehicle yet, but I do have a hood or a bonnet. Now you'll see I do not get the chance to um, put this in my backpack because, as we will see, it is very heavy. 100. So it is pretty heavy. And as I've noted before with this thing, um, when you're carrying it, it, um, it, it does awfully restrict one, one's vision. Um, you approach the car, and you need to find out where the hit point is, and you'll see you get R2 to attach. There we go. And in this case, I've also got a trunk. And a trunk is the same. 100. I know it looks smaller, but it's 100. Each of the doors is also 100. Heavy objects. Let's find a place to attach. There we go. Now then, there you go. So, now we have... Let's close that. Now we have something with a hood. You can drive it without the hood. You can drive it without that. And you can drive it without doors. It's perfectly functional. But what you will need is you're going to need this thing here. This is a car battery. You will need to find the place for it on the car. It's usually over in one of the side areas. And I've had problems with them before. But if you kind of hover the white pointer around, you'll eventually get to a spot where um, it fits and you can attach it. I also have in my inventory a spark plug, which I didn't want to drop in case it damaged it. Um, again, it can't be tricky to find this. It's usually on the engine block somewhere, obviously. Um, you just need to find it. The The Sark is quite easy. I found it to be very tricky on the Olga. Put it in there. There you go. Now, if you had one of these in your hands, which is a car radiator, that is this object here, you would also need to put that into place. I haven't taken that out because um, I was using this vehicle. The problem with the car radiator is 
if you take a car radiator out, you lose all of your coolant and then you have to top it up again. I currently don't have enough coolant to top it up, but the same principle applies. And you can find them in lots of places and you bring them over to your car and you can just slot them in. Do not drive your vehicle without filling it up with water. Do bear in mind that cars don't drink water and don't get infections, so you can fill it up with water from a stream or a creek without adding chlorine, but you will need quite a bit of water. Um, can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it is several bottles worth or several canteens worth, so you might have to make a few round trips. Or if you have a, a large container, like a jerry can, um, the jerry can will um, will fill it up quite easily with room to spare. This jerry can, however, as we can see, is full of gasoline. Now, it depends on the vehicle, and I, I had so much trouble with this the first time I tried to find vehicles, but you need to find the petrol cap, which, I don't know if you can see, it's right there. So you need to find it, and then you need to go over, and then you will get, you see, once you hover the pointer of it, you'll get the option to refuel. Refuel the vehicle. It was already nearly full, so that's good. So there we are. So now it's refueled. So, presumably, once you have yourself this vehicle, and once you have managed to top up the radiator with coolant, you have found yourself a battery, you have found yourself a spark plug, <clears throat> you have managed to get yourself all of the wheels that you want, you can then get in to drive it. And we'll talk about driving another time. You can get in, you can actually change seats, you can see it's R2, change seat, so I can change over here, should someone else want to get into drive, change over here. Sometimes you might find if you have an accident or you park it or something happens, you may find getting in through this side quite tricky or difficult, and you can then get in that side. Or perhaps if you're sneaky, you can put a landmine there so that if someone comes along to steal your car, they'll get blown up. Your car will take some damage, but you can then get in this side. Not that, you know, I would do anything like that. Um, I'll talk about driving and things in another uh, video because there are some uh, issues with driving, particularly on console, and some things you need to be aware of. So we're going to get out for now. But what I did say to you was that there was more to cars than meets the eye. So you will also need some additional tools. Here are some of the tools that you will find very useful. This is a blowtorch. A blowtorch can be used to repair the engine. Now this engine is in good condition so you will have to take my word for it, but if it was broken or damaged in any way you would be able to use the blowtorch to effect repairs. Most of the car can take an awful lot of damage and be repaired. If the engine is ruined, the entire vehicle is scrap. You will never be able to get it to start. You cannot repair the you cannot repair a ruined engine. You cannot replace a ruined engine. A destroyed battery can be replaced. A destroyed park spark plug can be replaced. Bodywork is incidental. As you can see, I've got some fenders that are that are effectively ruined. Um, the uh, wheels can all be either repaired or replaced. The radiator can be um, repaired or removed. In this case, the radiator is in pretty good condition anyway. But the minute that your engine goes red, you are in serious trouble. So always have yourself a handy little blowtorch in case something goes wrong. The other thing that you will be aware of, or that you need to be aware of, is the wrench. Now, what do you want a wrench for? Well, <laughs> some scallywags may decide that they like the look of your car and they want to steal bits off your car. <clears throat> now, in this case, it doesn't really matter much, but if you're holding a wrench in your hand and you approach a piece of bodywork, you get an option to lock. So if I hold R2, I now lock it. I, I, I can't take it off. I can open it and close it, but I can't take it off. This one, I have the option to take it to my hands. 
this one, that option has been removed. Let's let's lock the back with the wrench. Lock. You will tend to find that you probably need to have them open to lock in place. Same with the doors. You can lock all the doors with the wrench, but you probably have to have them open. What else might you want to do? Well, you might decide that you don't want people to steal your battery. To secure your battery, you will need the screwdriver. And you can lock your battery in place. You can do nothing for the spark plug, I'm afraid, that I'm aware of. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, there's nothing you can do with the spark plug. The radiator. You can also secure with the screwdriver. Um, I'm not going to unlock it because I don't want to run the risk of the fluid leaking out, but there you go. So you can lock some things in place. We now have the tire iron. Previously, I have made a point somewhat that if I find a vehicle parked up and or hidden somewhere and they have not locked the wheels, I often take a wheel off. Uh, call me mean, call me childish, call it a prank, call it whatever you want to call it. But I always work on the principle that it is so easy to lock the wheels and it is so easy for you to mess up someone's day by stealing the wheels off their car and dropping them in a river. So you can use the tire iron sometimes called the I think, lug wrench to lock the wheels in place including the spare wheel and that means that if you decide to park it up somewhere or leave it somewhere that no one can steal your vehicles wheels Now then, one thing I don't have, and I wish I did, is epoxy putty, because as you can see... Well, I'm in a slightly different place, but I did manage to get hold of some epoxy putty, so let's let's talk about epoxy putty for repairs. Now, um, you'll see here that the fender is marked as red, but I can't, I can't repair that with epoxy putty, so I don't know what the situation with that is. Um, the bumper is good. This fender is also marked as red, but I can't repair that with epoxy putty. That fender is good. Uh, we got the trunk. And we got um, round the back. Now, what you will see is that you don't get the option to repair while it is shut. So when I open it, I get the option to repair. And then I just hold with my epoxy putty. And it goes up a level, same as any other repair, up to the next level, right, and I close it. But as I said, it doesn't change the visual look. It still looks rubbish. So it's repaired, but it doesn't actually change change the visual. And the same with the hood. So repair the hood. That's all good. Close it. It still looks the same. So, I mean, arguably, that's one of the things I'd like to see as an improvement, obviously, is being able to repair the side fenders with epoxy putty, which for some reason I cannot, and also that it actually it gets better looking. So, there you go. That's repairing with uh, epoxy putty. Not fully. Same with doors. If the door has a broken glass um, on it, it will repair the look of the door, but not repair the look of the glass, which is a bit of a nuisance. But... There you go. Now then, the other thing that I have here is a tire repair kit. If you put the tire repair kit in your hand and you approach a tire and it is damaged, you will get the opportunity to fix it. All of my tires are in good condition, including my spare. So I don't need the tire repair kit, but it is a very handy thing to have and it will very much help in keep your tires in good condition. And just one last thing on um, 
light bulbs. So you saw me take out a light bulb. I have two light bulbs here. I have one light bulb which is ruined, which is of no use to me whatsoever. But I do have another one which is pristine. And you've probably seen boxed headlamp bulbs around. If you have a bulb in your hand and you can point it at the headlamp, you can attach it. As far as I know, there is no way to lock it in place. Nothing with the screwdriver. Nothing with the wrench. Um, they are very handy for driving at night, obviously, um, bearing in mind that um, those light sources do, do stick out quite a lot. It's the same principle for all the vehicles. The cosmetics change a little bit. The, um, like I said, some of the um, some of the weights may change in relation to the sizes of the wheels themselves and how you carry them around. Um, but that's it. Generally speaking, that's how you um, that's how you make your car into something that you can drive around and something that will get you from A to B relatively quickly. Now, I just want to point out one thing about cars. They do take a little bit of time sometimes to get set up. Um, you can have them for quite a bit of time. Uh, you can use them for moving around the map. They can be very helpful, albeit noisy, and they do attract some attention. Consequently, there are some people who will want to steal your vehicle from you. The two things that are critical to making a vehicle run are the spark plug and the battery. My advice would be never leave your spark plug and battery in the car. In fact, I would go so far as to say always make sure that you take your battery and spark plug out whenever you leave your vehicle. Now then, on that side, spark plugs don't weigh anything. So people who are looking for cars will often just carry a spark plug around on the off chance and batteries don't exactly weigh an awful lot either so and they spawn around a lot surprisingly so you can pick up a battery and a spark plug relatively easy which means if you find a car with all of its wheels and ready to go it's easy to steal it my advice would be if you can take off at least one if not two wheels bearing in mind that if you have a spare that is a replacement for one of these wheels so before you log off if you were going to leave your car somewhere and log off for the evening take a wheel off or get a crate or something or two and stick them in the trunk of your uh, vehicle and whenever you get out somewhere grab a wheel, stick it in one of your crates, and bury it. And then if someone does find your car, they have to find two wheels. And I can tell you now, finding car wheels is a bit of a mission in and of itself. So there you go. That's probably about as much as you need to know about the mechanics of setting up your car and protecting your car and making sure that it stays your car. And... What we'll do next time is have a look at how to drive your car because there are some things you need to be aware of and some glitches that can cause you some extreme problems. PlayStation.